Well, if you're like me, you probably have struggled in the creation of mosaics, or at least I've struggled. I purchased Astro Pixel Processor largely because I had heard so much anecdotal evidence about how easy it is to create mosaics in the application. And so I went ahead and I purchased it. All the videos that I could find on YouTube or anyplace else were for a really early prior version that didn't have hardly any of the options that the new version had. And so I struggled and I struggled with not only what settings, but what the process would be of actually creating a mosaic. To say easily that it's been painful would probably be an understatement. It's pretty straightforward once you finally figure it out, but before that, it's just a real, real struggle. I was under the illusion, and it really was kind of an illusion, that you could throw everything into Astro Pixel Processor and it would do its magic and it would spit out a mosaic. And, well, it's actually a two-stage process as I've come to discover. So stage one, the first step, is to process each panel of your mosaic individually. I have a four panel mosaic of the Heart and Soul Nebula taken with my ASI 2600MM um, Pro. And I, what I finally figured out was that you needed to process each panel separately and then the results from those become each panel becomes its own separate session if you will for final integration as a mosaic so uh, let me just kind of walk you through this you open up astral pixel processor now this assumes that you've already developed or stacked your images you know, on the individual panels. Now, uh, what I did was I shot, like I said, the Heart and Soul Nebula mon and HSO using my monochrome camera. So I've got sulfur, oxygen, and hydrogen for each panel, and there's four different panels. I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna name this thing Heart and Soul Mosaic, just so that I have a name. Of course, once you've done each of your panels and you've got those lights, then again, you're going to clear everything out or I just simply just shut down and then relaunch APP, Astral Pixel Processor. And this is the kind of the screen that you get. And I already have my directory set up. I already got all my configurations here set up, so I'm just ready to kind of load things and run with them. Now, because you've already processed each individual panel, and in my case, I've got four separate panels, you don't have to put in flats and darks and dark flax and biases and or bad pixel maps or anything because you've already done all that. So this is merely taking the four panels and the separate light for your different filters and basically combining them together. And that was the hard part that I had to figure out. I had to figure out that you couldn't just throw all your raw data in and then it would magically spit out a mosaic, but rather you had to process each individual panel as if it was its own separate picture. And then once you've got all the panels processed, you can then combine those panels. So that's what this step here is gonna show you is just really kind of how to combine the panels. It's pretty straightforward once you've already done your initial processing. So, you know, if you're gonna do any kind of drizzling, uh, you do that as you're putting together each of the individual panels. So all that kind of hard, heavy lifting work has already been done. So in this case here, I'm just gonna open up my lights here. So essentially what I'm gonna do here is each individual panel is its own, see, there we go. Each individual panel becomes its own session. So if you've got three panels, you'll have three sessions. If you've got four panels, you're gonna have four sessions. In my case, I have four panels. And let me minimize this just so that you can see. But 
this is what it looks like. Hopefully you can see this. So right here is the heart and right here is the soul. And essentially this is panel one, this is panel two, soul is in panel three, and then the bottom part of the heart here is in panel four. And so this is a four panel mosaic and you can see how it comes out. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I thought that a lot of this data was just gonna be wasted data. It's like there's no way that I can figure out how to combine all this data to create a large, nice, wide field with great detail photograph. But I kind of figured it out, and so that's what I'm going to walk you through here today. So what you're going to do here is you're going to load your lights, and they're going to be loaded in. Like I said, each panel is going to be its own session. So for instance, here's my hydrogen alpha, uh, session one and two. And then I've got my oxygen, and then I've got my sulfur. So I'm going to open those up and I'm going to apply the filter tag so I'm going to let it say okay this is a hydrogen this is a sulfur this is an oxygen and it's going to go in as session one panel one is session one and it's going to say hey these have already been integrated are you sure you want to load these absolutely so we're going to go ahead and load them and there they are so let me go ahead and walk you through and show you what they look like. So here's the hydrogen as it's loading up. And like I say, there's panel one. It's not much of an image. That's oxygen. Here's the, oh no, that's the hydrogen. Here's the oxygen. Not much oxygen there. And here's the sulfur. A little bit, you can see a gradient coming right through here. You can see it's dark here and it's dark here. So I've got gradients in this thing. And what's really nice about Astro Pixel Processor is that it's able to account for those gradients. And you'll see that the, the output of this thing is just, it blew my mind. It blew my mind. So that's session one, panel one. So now I'm going to load panel two, session two. So here's panel two. So I'm going to want my hydrogen alpha and my oxygen and my sulfur. And I'm gonna open those, yep. And those are gonna become session two. Panel two is session two. And it's reminding me that they've already been integrated. Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and add those. So I've got hydrogen alpha session one, session two. Oxygen 3, Session 1, Session 2, and Sulfur 2, Session 1, and Session 2. So that's my two panels. So I'm going to add my third panel. We've got the load here. We've got all that loaded. So that's good. Our sessions. All right. And then we go to 2, Calibrate. Basically, none of that really matters. Tab three, where is it? Analyze stars. Here's our first, first change. Okay. And the first change that we're going to do here with tab three is we're going to increase this value right here. And it, it defaults at 500. But because we're doing a mosaic, um, and you see here it says, if you read this little thing here, it says for mosaics, it's better to increase the desired amount of detected stars to at least 2,500, especially if your mosaic frames have little overlap, less than 10%. Well, I've got like, I, I want to say, I've, if I remember right, when I took these mosaics, they're at 15 to 20% overlap. I can't remember which one, but I'm going to go ahead and bump this thing up to 2500. So that's the first setting, and that's in tab three, analyze stars. You want to change um, the automatic number of stars uh, to 2500. So that's the first change you're going to do. And then you're going to move into the register tab here, 
and we're going to change our scale start and our scale stop. And I'm going to change this to 5 and this to 15. For mosaics that are composed regularly, like a 4x4 four four mosaic, so I basically have a 4x4, four four, where all panels um, overlap for about 10 to 20 percent, then the scale start can be set higher. Usually a value of 5 is fine. So that's what I'm doing, is I'm setting that as a value of 5. And then again, you get the same thing here. It just basically tells you the, that you can set the start scale, but it doesn't say what the stop scale is. Um, so basically, because I can't remember if I did uh, um, 15, see, for mosaic mode, you'll need to increase the scale stop usually to at least 10. This will correspond roughly to having a 10% overlap between the mosaic panels. If you have a bigger overlap between the panels, for instance 15, then the scale can be relaxed. But I'm going to keep it at 15 because it gives me great results. The next section we're going to do here on tab 4 register is we're going to click use dynamic distortion correction. Even though they were all taken with the same optics, because they've already been stacked, it's as if they are um, from different cameras because they will have been slightly distorted um, just based upon trying to map and uh, map up those edges. So I used uh, dynamic distortion and we just uncheck same camera and optics. And this is what confused me because this doesn't make any sense to me. It's like, well, it's the same camera, it's the same optics. But the problem is, is they've already been registered. They've already, you know, they've already been stacked. Um, so we don't need that. And we use this right here. Um, so it gives APP a little bit of wiggle room and play, if you will, to be able to to um, stitch those frames together, if you will. Then, of course, the registration mode here is going to be mosaic. Because we're doing a mosaic, a four panel. All right, so the next tab we're going to go to is normalize. Um, and the only thing you have to do in this tab is just basically go from mode regular to mode advanced. And it says for mosaic, integrations, usually the advanced mode gives far better normalization results. And it does do a great job at normalizing. I, I was just amazed at what I got um, between, you know, the different frames, even with the gradient and stuff, it still ended up with a fantastic, fantastic image. So then um, on tab six, which is our next tab for integrate, um, you're going to integrate per channel and you're going to integrate, I do integrate session and all because that's what I do. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to come down to local normalization correction, LNC. And you're going to want to do second degree and three is fine. Um, three iterations, that's perfectly fine. And then multi-band editing, we're going to enable it. And because we did the start and stop between 5 and 15, you just move this enable MMB up to 15 to match. There we go. My mouse is a little funky. And because you should have already done all your drizzling and all that kind of funky stuff um, beforehand, then all that you need to do here is just set the mode to interpolation um, 1.0. And it will just go ahead and work. And that's pretty much it. And then you would just hit your integrate button. 
Okay, so let me go ahead. Here's the hydrogen alpha of this particular mosaic. See how clean that is? Look at that. You cannot tell where one frame starts and one frame ends. Right here is where the natural break is, but it's really hard to see that. And where's number two here? Somewhere in here you can see the overlap right there. I mean, this is just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful um, image. So that's a four panel mosaic. You can see panel one, panel two, panel three, and panel four. And you can see all the molecular dust. I mean, this is just incredible. I'm just really jazzed with the end results. So that's the hydrogen alpha of that particular one. And then I'm going to go to the oxygen three Here's the oxygen three. Again, it's hard to tell where the panels meet, but you can see got great signal. Here's inside there. I mean, here's the fish head. Here's the inside of the soul. It's just, I mean, it's just, yeah, I'm pretty jazzed. This turned out pretty, pretty well. This turned out really, really well. And then here's the sulfur. Oh, there we go. Heart and soul sulfur. Now this one here, you can kind of see a little bit, but again, you really have to look hard. But I mean, if you didn't know there was a four panel mosaic, you wouldn't be able to tell. And you can see that there's a lot of structure right in there. That's where that star cluster is, that stellar nursery. And then here's another cluster right there. And yeah, it's beautiful. So that is how you do <laughs> mosaics an astral pixel processor. Let me go back to the hydrogen because I just, I think this is just a beautiful image. I love it. There we go. Look at that. That's just beautiful. And this is over three nights. So this has, I don't know, probably 18 hours for each one. So that's 18 hours of hydrogen or somewhere in that neighborhood. I'd have to go back and calculate it all out because I think I actually did it over four nights. That's a four panel mosaic. As you can see here, it's just drop dead gorgeous. Anyways, so that is a four panel mosaic using Astro Pixel processor. And the key, the key is to individually stack your individual panels first. And then once you've got all your panels stacked, then you just load them in just like I showed you. Just here is lights. Each panel becomes its own individual session. That's a key piece. Each panel becomes its own individual session. So if you've got four panels like I've got, you've got four sessions. If you've got three panels, you'll have three sessions. If you've got two panels, you'll have two sessions. Then you put in all of your light frames for that particular panel. So you already processed images. So in this case here, I put my, into session one, I put panel ones, uh, hydrogen, alpha, oxygen, and sulfur, and put it all into session one. Now, I've already processed this image. Here's the final processed image. So if you found any of this to be interesting, then please feel free to go ahead and check out my next video, which is right here, and come and continue the journey with me as I continue to explore astrophotography from the perspective of a photographer. So until next time, clear skies and happy guiding.